Hello, dearest friends in Belmont. Welcome to another Shabbat sermon, to another parasha. This week is the parasha of Baha'u'llah Tzacha. And I have a question. It's always bothered me, the following question. There's a whole episode, there's a whole small dialogue between Moshe and between his father-in-law, Yitro, Yisro. And it goes as follows. The Jewish people are ready to leave and to make their way to get to Israel. That's the plan. We still haven't had the spies yet. So really, they think they're a matter of days away from getting to Israel. And they're packing up all the encampments and everyone's getting themselves ready. And Moshe turns to Yitro and he says, Yitro, father-in-law, you know, you're here, you're with us. Come with us to Israel. Don't go home. Don't go back to Midian or wherever your family might be from. Come with us to Israel. And Yitro replies, I'm sorry. I've had a great time with you, but it's not for me. I want to go home. I want to go back to what I know, back to my family, back to where I'm sort of in charge of my own destiny. I, I, I'm not going to come with you. Then Moshe turns to Yitro and he says, Vayoma, he says, Alna ta'azov otanu. Do not forsake us, Yitro. You can't leave us here, as if to say. And then he goes on to say, you, you should be our eyes. And our commentators understand, what's Moshe saying to Yitro? Yitro, we need you. We need your eyes. We need your experience. You know this terrain. You know the land. You know the desert. You, Yitro, have traveled the world. You understand how to navigate and to survive in the culture that we find ourselves, in the environment, sorry, that we find ourselves in here in the desert. We need you. We need you with us. We can't do it without you. And this has forever puzzled me. Now, I understand, Moshe, you know, we're a nice Yiddish fella, and, you know, our brothers and sisters, we're not used to getting our hands dirty. In the, that's not what he's saying. That can't be what he's saying. Who's leading them in the desert? What is their shining? It's God. God is leading the way. He's the shining light. They're following God. They're going left, right, up, down. They're not using Google Maps. They're not using local guides to find their way in the ways in which they walk and travel. God, he's taken them out of Egypt. He's led them to Sinai and he will lead them in the safest and most appropriate way to get into Israel. Why on earth? Is Moshe begging Yitro, saying, we need you, we need your eyes, we need your experience. Why, why would he need Yitro in the first place? Surely God is showing them the path. That's a question that's bothered me for many years. And I think I'd like to try and answer it as follows. What is the difference between Yitro being there and not being there? What makes Yitro so special? And actually, it's so obvious. What stands Yitro out from everyone else? Take Yitro aside. Everyone else there all experienced one thing together and Yitro missed it. What was that? We have to go back a few sidrops. We have to go back to the middle of the book of Shemot. And what happened? The Ten Commandments. Revelation at Sinai. Every Jew in the world, as was, stood at the foot of the mountain, experienced God, entered into the relationship with God. They all proclaimed, we will do, we will listen, we will enter into this relationship with Hashem. According to the Midrash, the mountain was plucked up from the ground, held over their heads, and they were almost forced into that relationship. So not only did they experience God, they were forced pushed, encouraged into that relationship with God, who then embraces them and we become the chosen people, a part of that infinite connection, that relationship between God and the Jewish people. That's what everyone experienced. They experienced the face and power and might and awesomeness of God and they experienced the relationship built, the, the, the very foundations of the relationship between God and his people. That's what they had. Yitro didn't have any of that. How did Yitro come? Why did he come? Because he heard about Mount Sinai. He heard about National Revelation. He heard about this incredible, incredible moment in our history. And what did he say? I want a piece of that. Yitro, who traveled the world, trying to find God, trying to get to the very truth, the roots 
of our existence and the purpose for our being. And what was his conclusion? What did he come up with? That God, the God of the Jews, that is truth. He didn't come into it because he was wowed by awesomeness or wowed by God holding the mountain over the head or he wasn't pushed into it. It was his choice and his choice alone that led him to be part of the Jewish people. He, with his free will, with his open heart, with his intellect and his mind and everything that it was his being, came to the conclusion, this is where I'm meant to be. And Moshe realised that. Moshe says to Yitro, I need your eyes. I need what you have seen. I need you as a person around us because we were forced almost to be here. We had that moment with God. You didn't, you have, you could be anywhere else in the world right now, but you have chosen to be here. And Moshe realized if we're going to keep on this journey and if we're going to keep tied together, we need someone like Yitro around because he is an inspiring individual. This well-rounded, bright, charismatic, grounded individual has chosen to be here. And he understands the importance of our heritage. He has made the decision himself to be a Jew. This is the person that we need around us to be a, a shining light, an inspiration, a role model. Someone that can help to guide us. Not the terrain on the ground but the terrain in here and the terrain in our hearts. Moshe realised, bring someone close to you who can lift you, build you and inspire you. And that can have such a powerful, dramatic effect on his people. And that's the message I want to take from this. We always talk about in our home, in the Levine family household, what are friends? Are friends people you enjoy hanging out with, have a laugh with? Or are friends people that can pick you up, inspire you, build you, push you even to be a greater version of yourself. Moshe is teaching us the valuable lesson. The people around us should be those that can do those things. Inspire us, push us, help guide us, lift us, catch us when we fall. Those people that are those shining lights in difficult times and are also those people that can give us a hug even if it has to sometimes be virtually. That's the essence of what a friend should be. Can we bring ourselves closer to these types of people? Can we look for people in our lives that have that impact on us, that touch our hearts, can guide us through, use their eyes, guide us through their experiences and the terrain that is life through the most difficult and yet the most happiest times as well. Allow those people around us to guide us, to build us, to pick us up. And those friendships will be so strong, so inspiring, so important and influential in our lives. They help make us who we are supposed to be. But as Rata Hashem, we can all find those special people in our lives. We can appreciate them. We can allow them to be close to us and to have that positive impact on us. Wishing you all a beautiful Shabbos and I hope to see you very, very soon.